Well, the S&P 500 volatility index is near multi-year lows on Friday. So has investor fear evaporated or just moved somewhere else? Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Susan Lee. Let's start with Mark Tepper, Strategic Wealth Partners, and Stacey Gilbert is with Susquehanna. So Stacey, you keep a close eye on volatility expectations. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, it's interesting that we talk about the VIX as it's the fear gauge. But one of the things to keep in mind what goes into this fear gauge here is the S&P 500 volatility. And then it looks at kind of the ratios of how those protective puts are trading relative to the, what we'll call the overriding the out of the money calls. And the interesting component that goes into this volatility here for the S&P 500 is how well things are moving together. It's our correlation component. So if we kind of break this down a little bit, sure, the S&P 500 does not have a high volatility right now. In fact, it's a historically low, which has rippled into the VIX levels also being low. But you kind of pull apart that onion a little bit and you dig into some of the individual sectors and you can see that there is some real concern with some of these sectors. Let's go with industrials, for example. This is a sector within the S&P 500 where that volatility is high relative to the broader market. The market is saying there's some real concern that industrials should, could see outside moves. This doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's just that there's where some real volatility movement could be this this year. It's interesting if you look into some other sectors like energy or like biotech, they're actually at the lower end of the year, two year ranges here, which is suggesting that energy may not be as crazy as, as it's been over the last two years. And biotech, as much as it's been subject to every tweet out there from multiple different people over the last couple of years, may not have that same volatility. Now let's pull out of the S&P 500, go a little bit broader market here. Where are some of the bigger risks that aren't just sector? And they would definitely be small cap would be one area relative to the broader market. You know, again, not surprising, it has outperformed the S&P since the election over two times. And a lot of that is is because it's domestic focused. And obviously with the new administration, they are very domestic focused. And that seems to be one area where investors are concerned. Sticking with the domestic focus, it's going to also be in your long data treasury. So we'll use the TLT as your example there. That volatility is twice what it normally is to the broader market. Just saying that there's real risk to movements in treasury, small cap, and a couple of the individuals. Individual mm -hmm. sectors. Well, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, volatility might, might highlight risk, but it also means opportunity, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's certainly opportunity with volatility. Sometimes that volatility could be on the, the, the positive side of the mean. Um, where is the, the greatest risk right now? We, we would say that we're seeing more volatility and more risk in the tech sector. Um, when you look at the tech sector, uh, unfortunately, the strong dollar is a huge headwind for the tech sector. Uh, you've, the, the tech sector has, uh, they, they get 59% of their revenues coming from overseas, whereas the broader S&P 500 uh, is getting 44% of their revenues for overseas. So as that dollar continues to strengthen, um, you know, unfortunately, we're, we would imagine that we're going to see some more volatility in that tech sector. Okay. Well, Mark and Stacy, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for joining us today on Trading Nation. I'm Susan Lee. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.